Hello, friends. We are in a troubling time when it comes to misinformation. Here at Forbidden Knowledge News, I've always taken an unbiased, open-minded, and responsible approach to presenting my own theories, and the views of our guests do not reflect that of my own. This show is for entertainment purposes only, and any information presented during this show is a live-action role-play scenario. Conspiracies are definitely fun to discuss in a responsible way. My suggestion to everyone that has an audience and presents theories and possibilities should present them as such and in no way present unsubstantiated information as truth. All that being said, enjoy this episode. Back to Forbidden Knowledge News. I'm your host, Chris Matthew. Today, my guest is Elizabeth Hancock. First, a couple of announcements. Check out our new affiliate, Brain Supreme. Brain Supreme contains the highest quality ingredients to start your microdosing journey. Visit their website, brainsupreme.co. If you go to brainsupreme.co slash discount slash FKN15, you get 15% off your entire order. The link is right in the description. Also, watch the Forbidden Documentary Occult Louisiana, available on Tubi and multiple streaming platforms, and always download our podcast episodes directly through Spreaker. Today, I want to welcome Elizabeth Hancock. She is a researcher and author specializing in spirituality, metaphysics, and consciousness. She is a dedicated truth seeker and focuses on the nature of reality, lost history, secret societies, and our star ancestry. Elizabeth, welcome. How you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Thank you for inviting me on. It's great to be here. It's great to have you. I am very much looking forward to this discussion. Your research covers everything from metaphysics and spirituality to lost history and the multidimensional nature of reality. This is all some of our favorite topics here. And just in the past couple of years, there seems to have been a noticeable increase in the interest in some of these topics. Which also, unfortunately, comes with a lot of misinformation to sift through, but it does seem like more people than ever are seeking answers and becoming aware that there may be much more to this reality than our mainstream science and academia would ever acknowledge now. So there's a lot to discuss. I'm really interested in your research. Before we get into it, this is your first time on. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what brought you to this work. Okay, so yeah, so I mean, you know, I think like most uh, kids, I was very intuitive and, um, you know, then um, society just sort of blocks you down, you know, and I think what we sort of call intuitive is probably the multidimensional self, which, you know, we are born as that multidimensional self, which we all are, and then society, which, you know, it just doesn't quite know how to deal with this you know it just shuts children down you know whether it's parents fear whether it's religion um education i mean just everything everything in our society shuts down this multi-dimensional um you know sort of human that we are and um you know sort of puts us into if if you like puts us into this mind matrix you know 3d mind matrix you know this is what the world looks like this is what you're going to see this is what you're going to do and then you know everyone just sort of toes the line you know and just does what everyone else is doing and we end up you know in the the corporate world and the rat race and you know and all that sort of stuff and we just sort of forget you know we forget who we are but then around 10 years ago my mom died 
and I started to hear her voice in my head and I just thought it was part of the grieving process, you know, and um, I was sort of chatting to her for about a year and then one day my sister was coming to visit and I asked her if she had um, a message to pass on to my sister and she gave me this message and um, I then told my sister and it was just so profound for my sister. It started, it planted a seed, if you like, and I started to ask myself, could actually, you know, could I have been talking to my mother? And I do think that I was. You could say that it was a, you know, a part of her consciousness. Um, you know, I think that we are all multidimensional and I don't believe that we die. I think that we just, we, we lose the body and we move on and we, you know, e either incarnate or we move on to somewhere else. But our essence, our soul, if you, as people call it, but, you know, our life force, it, it, it carries on. And, um, Anyway, at the same time, there were other strange things going on in my life, you know, and I just, I started to explore it. I started to explore all the science behind it because I had a very analytical mind, very logical mind, um, and I needed to understand how it all worked, you know, and um, I just began exploring and, you know, like multidimensionality, string theory, M theory, you know, all these different scientific theories, quantum physics, and um, I just sort of researched this for about four years. And then, um, you know, that that is the culmination of this book, you know, my first book. And um, you know, that's all the science behind the woo, if you like, mm. and everything sort of in there. And then um, I then sort of started to research more for my next book, which has just come out literally like two weeks ago. Mm. And that's because I was really passionate about, understanding who we are and it's something I've always been passionate about you know what's our purpose why are we here who we are um because I I never believed that you know we just are lumps of flesh that live and die it just it it never felt that never never resonated with me so um you know I just went on sort of another journey for another two years and started um researching and writing for my next book which is all about who we are our star ancestry and the multiverse, you know, that, that we live in, that we're part of. Excellent. That's a great introduction. The more I learn about this, the more I really have questions about everything. There's seems to be layers to this reality that mm -hmm. contain an ecosystem of life forms just beyond our perception. Now, if you had to break down this reality, this multidimensional existence, and the the layers beyond, where would you start when trying to describe this matrix system that we're in? Well, you know, over my over the past few years of researching, I've become I've come to understand and believe that it actually all starts with the heart. And when you think about how the heart has been completely shut down, it's, you know, it's all been traumatized in all of us. And then the ones who haven't been traumatized, you know, we've got the cheesy romance films, you know, that sort of mm -hmm. everything is designed to pull us out, you know. And I think that that actually is where it all begins. So the soul is sort of like a prism, if you like, you know, and it's just sort of, you know, like all different aspects of it. I think that we exist in probably 12 dimensions, you know, which correlates with the 12 strands of DNA that we are becoming again, this 12 stranded DNA. From my research, I understand that all beings in the universe are 12 stranded DNA and we, ours was cut down and reduced down to two, but we can see that now children are beginning to, um, I think there's a, there's a boy, 2016, called Alfie, who's now got three str strands of DNA. They've now discovered um, a fourth strand of DNA, which they're attributing to a disease, a disorder. Mm. But I think what it's showing is that actually we're activating back up again. So, you know, not only does it show, show that we would suppress, but we are activating back. And that, I think, is to do with the, the you know, the the rising energies of the planet, the light codes, you know, the crop circles, all this stuff, it's activating our consciousness back. Um, it's activating our consciousness back into this multidimensional um, reality, this world, if you like. So it's something which I believe that we access through the mind. But I think what humans have done wrong is they've been accessing it through the mind for 
many, many civilizations. And I think this is why Atlantis um, fell because what that what the what we keep missing is it's actually through the heart we have to spiritually evolve and access our multidimensional self through the heart and i think that's where it all starts um and so i'm always saying to people if you just do one thing just work on your heart release the trauma you know release the ancestral abuse trauma that's gone on for thousands of years and just and open up your heart again and it can feel very painful. Certainly when I opened up mine, it felt like, you know, you can feel everything and it feels like, you know, like knives stabbing you, you know, because this world is so low vibrational. But the more of us who can do that, the more we actually will raise the vibration of the planet. And, you know, once we get to a high enough level, all the, the, the crap will fall away. You know, it just won't be able to exist at that vibrational frequency because everything is about frequency. Mm. So we've been in this lower frequency for a very long time, uh, you know, on purpose. And we're all now raising our frequency so that we can, you know, get into this higher, higher frequency, connect with the higher frequencies, connect with higher consciousness, but also raise the frequency of the planet as well so that we can move into a better reality ourselves. Excellent. I want to get a little further into your understanding of what is happening right now. I've noticed a lot of amazing things with the collective consciousness and people's awakening. I'd like to go back to human origins. I know you've done a lot of research into this, and this is also one of the biggest mysteries. The more we learn about our ancient past, it seems that the older humanity is and the more advanced we possibly were as far as our knowledge of science and technology. It was probably a lot different types of technology than we're used to now, but the more evidence comes out, it seems that we were a very advanced race possibly at multiple times in our ancient past, and there may have been multiple resets or cataclysms. What is your understanding of human origins, and was there another hand in it, a non-human intelligence? Yeah, well, certainly human origins goes back a very long way. Um, Dr. Gary Nolan has now put forward his... Um, research which essentially shows us that human DNA is nine billion years old. Now if the planet is really only four and a half billion years old then it means that that categorically proves that humans have not come or human DNA has not come from this planet. So it's been brought to this planet at some point. And certainly there are many, many people who are saying that you know, this is the case and you only have to look at the panspermia theory which part of that theory, although it talks about, you know, dust coming down from, you know, cosmic dust coming down from other planets and things, which I believe it it does, but it also, part of that theory also involves um, space beings coming here and seeding the complex DNA, including our DNA, because our DNA is so complex, it just, you know, it, I mean, Francis Crick, the Nobel Prize winner said this, that it's the only thing that made any sense to him was that we we must have been seeded here from something outside of the planet. So mm. when we look at that and we look at this, you know, sort of the evolved ape theory, which has never, ever been any proof of, and yet it's still being taught to us. But, you know, even now, scientif scientists know that the the human is here and the apes is here. And there are so many missing links you know, it just doesn't it just doesn't correlate in that way. So I think probably the only thing that you could possibly say is that, okay, if if it was an ape, then this ape was genetically altered many times in order to create the human species. Or apes and humans just, you know, were around at the same time and um humans came here from another planet. So whichever way you look at it, it's you know, it it's we haven't evolved from apes, essentially. Mm -hmm. So we, there's also evidence, Michael Cremo, he's very interesting. He talks a lot about the skeletal remains that have been found on the planet. So there's human remains, uh, even with the rounded head, I think, the rounded skull, which isn't supposed to have come in since, um, like 
30, 40,000 years ago with Cro-Magnum. He was the rounded skull. Before that, you know, the ne- Neanderthal and everyone had sort of the more elongated one. But he's saying that there's skeleton remains going back 286,000 years. It's found in very old coal strata. We've got all the ancient relics, you know, the... Um, 500 million year old zinc vase and you know all, just all this stuff which is completely hidden to us mm. so the thing is we're all sort of trying to make sense of the world and trying to make sense of who we are where we come from but so much of this information has been hidden so it's a bit like you know trying to make a cake when you've only got two of the ingredients you know we're not going to be able to really understand who we are and where we come from until we have all the information. And of course, the geneticists, you know, as Lloyd Pye wrote about in his book, the geneticists have also said, some have come forward and said that we, that we haven't been given all the information about our DNA either. Mm. You know, so I, I mean, I've got sort of, you know, my own opinions about things, but ultimately it's a very hard question to answer when we don't have all the information. Any thoughts about the Anunnaki mythos and if there's any accuracy or validity to Zachariah Sitchin's research or some of the other modern researchers that look into the Sumerian mythos? Hello, friends. At some point in our journeys, we all need guidance and direction. One thing I've learned along the way is that there are many ways to connect with our soul mission. Jennifer Halcom offers over 30 years experience with intuitive tarot, life coaching, and energy and attachment clearing. She helps others with energetic blocks become aligned with their soul mission. She offers one-on-one or online Zoom sessions, and cases are assessed on an individual basis, and she works with everyone truly in need. You can email her now to set up a free consultation at jenniferhalcom at gmail.com or through Facebook Messenger. All those links are right in the description. Yeah, well, I mean, I do think that the Anunnaki were here. I think that possibly um, there were many, like uh, a lot of them are called Anunnaki. I, I think from my research, what I'm seeing is that there are multiple gods and you even see this still in some of the religions. You know, some some of the religions, you know, in India, they still worship, you know, like hundreds of gods. And I think that what we're under, well, what I feel is that these gods were advanced beings, you know, off planet, inner earth, whatever it may be, but they were very advanced to the local population. And they were seen as gods, which would make sense. So these gods were using advanced technology. You know, we can see evidence of advanced technology everywhere in our world, just the pyramids alone. And, um, you know, we can see that there, there, was, um, there were a lot of different people here. And, you know, there were many benevolent gods. I mean, you know, we've been given so much information and help. You know, medicine was, was given to us. You know, surgery was given to us, I think, like 600 BC or something. The first cataract operation was performed. Mm-hmm. Um, so many things have been given to us. So, you know, I, I do think that the Anunnaki definitely existed. In terms of the cuneiform tablets and Enki and Enlil, thing, things like this, I don't know, you know, I I think we put too much emphasis on Enki and Enlil. And when I see too much emphasis and this being allowed into the world and not suppressed, I always, you know, alarm bells ring, you know, because there's so much suppression about everything. And why is it that we're allowed to have some of this information and other stuff is suppressed? Mm-hmm. And um, I do think that there's enough evidence to show that we've been genetically altered but there are different i don't think that the genetic alterations have all been bad that's the thing so the next question is well who is doing these and i, I do think that it, it, our, our dna shows suppression so someone must have done that it, it the anunnaki has talked about so many different texts that i think that we need to accept that you know they were here that 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 they were doing these things what they genetically altered i think is still a mystery 
you know, did they genetically alter an ape or did they genetically alter a Neanderthal, Homo erectus, which, you know, we can see they were still humans and that was still human DNA. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, they possibly altered a human that was evolving in a spiritual way, because I think that's what that's what evolution is. It's not, you know, like Darwin's theory. Evolution is spiritual. And we're all evolving with, if you like, consciousness, the creator, the universe, you know, everyone is evolving in this way. And I think that genetic changes were done to us to stop us evolving in that spiritual way, maybe not on purpose. Maybe we were created, you know, we were turned into a worker being or a worker species because they needed someone to mine the gold. But um, then after that, they they sort of um, physically advanced us, but we weren't spiritually advanced enough. And one of the most interesting things here is the, the Dogon tribe who talk about the Nomo and how the, the Nomo came from Sirius B. And then the Anunnaki were also supposed to have come from Sirius B. So I've been asking myself the question, well, are these the same people? And if so, the Nomo were described as an amphibian reptilian race who altered the, the DNA, genetically altered a mammal on the planet in order to create a, um, a vessel to house their consciousness. So they were a species that were able to um, self-fertilize, if you like, but they still needed to occasionally um, have, you know, like the, the normal man and woman thing. So they were creating the female species and creating the male species. The female species worked, the male species didn't, and they created, you know, what um, they call the jackal. And it's the jackal that's apparently been putting all the that that's that was the the the, um, the species that they couldn't uncreate. They then tried to uncreate and and um, go back, to, you know, to, to sort of to, to to uncreate all the genetic changes that they'd made. Yeah, mm. and they couldn't do it. So in a sense, they then felt that they had put the jackal into the world, and that was creating all the chaos. So this is you know another theory just to throw into the the mix. Right. But if they are the Anunnaki, then that, that fits in, we know, with the reptilians, we've got the amphibian, you know, we've got um, um, amphibian DNA in us. I met a, a lady uh, recently, and um, it, actually it was about last year, and she told me that she was born with webbed hands and webbed feet. Mm. She's also RH negative. She, um, you know, she, she has the red hair. She has all that sort of, you know, like the Anunnaki Lilith sort of, you know, white skin, all of that. So that's very interesting as well. So like I was saying, we don't have all the answers yet, but I do think that the cuneiform tablets must have been talking about something and, and you know, it comes up in the Nagamadi texts as well with the rulers of reality. So there's definitely been something like this on our planet, some sort of, you know, something that's been suppressing us, something that's been changing and altering us. I've heard such a wide range of theories about the nature of these beings, whether they're non-humans or extraterrestrials. Many believe that it's possible that these are not physical beings at all, that they are non-corporeal energetic intelligences or maybe some sort of archetypes or thought forms that can interact with us. We have researchers like Jacques Vallée who's presented this possibility of a grand intelligence that can manifest in different ways through our mind's eye, through our consciousness, and it can seem like a very real physical experience. But again, I consider all these possibilities. I'd love to get your thoughts on that, and this also leads to the different types of intelligences that are possibly non-physical, which you would consider maybe demonic or disincarnate spirits. And I'd like to get your understanding of this spectrum of beings. Hmm. Well, yes, I think that there are many entities and beings. I mean, you know, if you imagine the multiverse hmm. with parallel realities, you know, different timelines, um, different universes, different dimensions. I mean, I think that there is a, a multitude of different forms of form, if you like. And you know, I think that 
it's very hard for us to get our head around concepts which most likely involve advanced technology, so advanced that we actually don't understand at all how it works. We're trying to understand how all of this works from a 3D point of view, and it's not 3D, you know? So my understanding, consciousness, of course, as we know, underpins the quantum field. So consciousness drives everything. Now there's this understanding now that consciousness could be plasma. And this is very interesting because plasma, when you look at the, um, the in the 1800s, when they were doing all this sort of um, psychic work, you know, it was when they were really, really pushing this psychic work and they were trying to bring in spirits and the spirits were essentially able to come in and you could see like a foot or a hand, you know. Yeah, the spirit photography so, era. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, so what if that's what the the spirit was trying to do was literally like manifest itself into physical form using plasma. And, um, you know, when you sort of think of it like that, then you sort of think, okay, physical form is low, low, lower vibrational energy waves. Energy form is higher vibrational energy waves. And when you think of the different vibrational frequencies that we have in the multiverse, then you can understand how, you know, you can be, you, there can be physical form or they can be light beings or entities. And of course, we're not even physical. We're actually made of light ourselves, as quantum physics is, is, has shown us. So I think what we're talking about here is advanced technology. And I don't see why a species a thousand years or a billion years more advanced than us has not worked out how to dematerialize and materialize. You know, shapeshifters come up in all of our ancient myths, our, our old myths, and I think the myths are really showing us um, things that actually happened on, on our planet. You know, when our planet, I think our planet used to be 5D. And I think that's what it's showing us, you know, all this advanced technology, all these different things that these people could do. And of course, if they could do that, then they could easily um, manipulate the physical form, I think. And so, you know, yes, of course, you know, entities and beings, they, they would be able to do different things that we can't do. But I don't think it necessarily means that they're not physical. Mm. It just means that they're able to manipulate and harness and tap into the field of consciousness that we are only just beginning to explore. We've literally just started exploring consciousness. If we spend the next you know, thousand years exploring consciousness like Dr. Stephen Greer said we're going to be doing, I think we'll really understand how ETs use it, how they, you know, they, they sort of um, use it to, to, to come in with their ships, you know, plasma consciousness, that they actually have, um, the, the, the ships themselves are living beings. And it's driven through consciousness. I mean, there's just so much, so much that they can do. And all of this is consciousness, which we're beginning to understand ourselves. Mm. You mentioned that you believe the planet used to be 5D. Could you break down what exactly you mean by that? <clears throat> well, in quite a few of the ancient texts, and I can't remember exactly which ones they are, but I think it may be like the Indian Vedas or, you know, or maybe it's like Tibetan culture but they talk about well actually agatha so agatha they talk about this being in another dimension and um, when we have raised our vibration we'll be able to see it again there's also islands you know like complete islands and buildings which in our ancient stories they say well these buildings have been seen before and then they sort of drop out of sight, if you like. And so as we go back into the golden age, as the indigenous tribes call it, we will then start to see these buildings again. So that's sort of telling us that then there must be more to this planet that we can actually see. And if that's the case, are we talking about different dimensions? Um, you know, maybe different densities or something. But I think that we probably are. And... In most of the research I've been looking at, it talks about how space is in 5D. And I've always found this quite interesting because that would actually sort of make sense. So what we're seeing in our 3D reality is not really 
you know, we're saying like a, a 3D version of it. But if you imagine that space is 5D, then it means that all these different planets that we have could actually sustain life. And I think that they probably are. But we're not able to see it because they've been put into this sort of 3D mind matrix, if you like. So I do think that as we're moving back into 5D, we will be, we will be able to see more of what's around us. I also think that things like dragons and Sasquatch, I think that they can move off into other, other dimensions. I think they're transdimensional because you know, that would explain why the Sasquatch you know, has never been caught and in why dragons, you know, that they... We have the bones. I think dinosaurs were dragons. I know that there's a sort of a, a, a dinosaur, a dragon looking head that was found in Dorset not long ago. And I think that these were dragons, you know, but, um, you know, now I know that people are still talking about seeing them and things like this, you know. So, yeah, I think that, 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 that our reality is much wider than we have been led to believe. Mm. And as we start to explore some of these older esoteric concepts, a lot of Gnostic understandings are starting to resurface. And there's a, many people, <clears throat> excuse me, that have the unfortunate perspective that our reality has been hijacked by negative forces, that we are somehow trapped in this reality, constantly recycled, and basically our energy is food for negative archonic intelligences. I do consider all the possibilities. I'd love to get your thoughts on, is it possible that at least some aspects of our reality have been hijacked by negative forces? Yes, I, I think that they probably have. And I, um, from my research, this is going back at least 6,000 years, if not 12,000 years. And, um, you know, there are many people that say that these are the Anunnaki descendants who do this. And, of course... Um, we have the secret societies, and some of them are negative. Mm. There's there's three negative secret societies who are really sort of, you know, doing a lot of chaos, causing a lot of chaos at the moment, and have been running reality for at least a hundred But probably more like Sorry, thousands, you froze you know? up. Uh, you froze up we a second. We can see that. Yeah, you're saying how long have they been in control? So um, they, they, we can see that they've been in control for at least 120 years because we're talking about the Rothschild, the Rockefellers, you know, these sorts of people. If they really are practicing Satanism, which I'm sure that they probably are because there's just so many accounts of this and so many whistleblowers, then it begs the question, well, who are they, who are they doing it for? You know, who are they worshipping? And, you know, black magic exists, absolutely. When you use blood, you know, that's black magic. And um, magic, you know, is energy. You know, it, it's we, we live in an energy world. You know, there's energy fields everywhere. So the CIA has been working on mind control technology for at least 100 years. And, you know, you've got to ask yourself the questions, well, why? You know, why all these different things? If there wasn't this suppression going on, then why would they be doing these sorts of things? So I agree with you that we don't have to allow that to push us into fear. Mm. Remember I was saying everything is about the heart. We've really got to focus on raising our vibration. A lot of this misinformation now and information all being designed to keep our vibration low. So everything in the world at the moment is designed to keep our vibration low so that we do not step into the higher vibrations and essentially move our planet you know out of the crap mm. so interdimensional beings they do exist they live between dimensions as the the word suggests and they don't have physical bodies you know so somewhere along the line did someone call one of these in yeah i suspect that the vatican did mm. and um you know the, the jesuits and um who is it that they called in? Who are they worshipping? Well, there are many people that say the Dracos. But even if it's not the Dracos, you know, it's still um, like, you know, the demons or whatever, you know, that, they, that there's something was called into our world. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, I do think that we were trapped into a karmic cycle. But I also know that all of this has been, it's being undone. It's all being undone. So since 2012, we've been able to leave the planet. You know, the karmic cycle was broken then. Mm. 
since um, all the children who've been coming in for the since 2010 have all been coming into a higher that they'd be coming into 4D, basically. So, you know, already things are being undone. The, you know, I do think that there are white hats and um, I think that they're working with off-planet benevolent species. I think, you know, that that we come from different species and um, they're, they're also working behind the scenes. I can see that there's a, a massive effort to raise the, the levels of consciousness of the planet. You can just see this mm. everywhere. And the fact that you know you can, that you can even measure the energy, and you can feel, you can see that it's it's already risen so much. You know, we are we are raising. You know, we are sort of shifting our vibration, if you like. So, I think the thing is for me, I'm not scared of information. I'd rather know the truth, even if it's really uncomfortable. I'd rather know it. But I also know that there are many people who don't like information if it's if it's mm -hmm. bad. But for me, it's knowledge is power. If you, if we know this information, then we can equip ourselves to deal with it. You know, we can't hide under the bed and pretend things aren't happening. We have to find out this information and then find solutions in order to, you know, work with it and um, understand what part we need to play. And, you know, and what do we need to do to help the planet? So that's sort of how I tend to look at things these days. Yeah, that's a great perspective. I wanted to get your thoughts on what is unfolding right now. The awakening that we were just mentioning, you also mentioned in 2012, our karmic cycle was broken. What is occurring on our planet right now and causing this awakening? And what do you think this will lead to? Okay, so... um. Like I said, I think that we have been trying to, it, it's all about spiritual evolution, which in my mind is levels of consciousness, you know, so humanity is moving to their next level of consciousness, which we could say is 4D, 5D, um, you know, I sort of see it like this. And we have been trying to spiritually evolve for a, quite a while. And we have been stopped, I think, from evolving. And we're now moving into, you know, this, what people call the golden age, but I haven't really researched this too much, but I know, I know Dr. Stephen Greer talks about this and says that it, this is, this is our destined time to move back into the golden age. We're apparently destined to, to now have 500,000 years of peace. And that's what the, the planet is supposed to be having. So, I tend to look at it in terms of that we've been held back and suppressed because we can see this in so many different areas of our world. And now the suppression is lifting, if you like. And um, I think that, we're, that there's a lot of help that we're being given. But humanity itself, in order to spiritually evolve, we have to get back to our heart. And this is the, you know, the most important thing. We've all got to raise our vibration from the heart in order to raise the vibration of the collective and move out of 4D, if you like, and move into 5D. So the interdimensional beings, demons, whatever, they will not be able to exist past 4.3D. So I think we're something like 3.9 now, maybe even 4. Mm. But we need to get beyond that so that they literally will fall away. It's a bit like, you know, frequency healing with disease, you know, like you bombard the body with high vibrational frequencies like the Salvegio frequencies and the disease literally cannot exist in that high vibration anymore and it just falls away. And this is, um, you know, you look at the empire of Tartaria, which was the free energy empire. This is exactly what they were doing and using the churches and cathedrals to do this. So this was only 200 years ago, you know, it shows that we have all this, this energy, we have all this technology, we've had free energy before, you know, we, I think there are still some people using it on this planet, and it's just there waiting for, um, for us to just sort of awaken and raise our vibration. And for these, um, you know, the 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 people like the uh, sort of the Rothschilds, you know, we call them the elites, the parasites, psychopaths, whatever, you know, for for these people to just leave 
and move off the planet or to just sort of disappear from view if you like you know so that we can become the the majority on the planets as we always have been but they were manipulating the energy fields and sort of pulling it all around to them if you like and i think they were using probably black magic spells to do that but but um yeah you know so i i think that this is um this is the case it definitely seems like a very critical time in our human history and there seems to be this reaction from the parasitic ruling class to the awakening and trying to cause chaos basically and throw out lots of bad information get people full of fear from whatever new disease or sickness or terrorist or war that could be in the future and it all seems to be ramping up as their final effort to try and keep control over things yeah exactly and that's why we've probably got maybe another five years of chaos Mm. um you know but it i mean i know that there's a lot of things coming in even next year you know so there are humanitarian projects that are going to be starting the next few years uh, the money has now been taken off these, um, you know, the parasites, and it's been sort of, it's now being held by the military. This is all white hat intel. And um, we've got all this off-planet technology just waiting in the wings to come in, you know, med beds. I know med beds are ridiculed by people, but they are actually real. And it's it's holographic um, technology, which is, you know, essentially heals the body because, you know, we live in a holographic universe, I think, or multiverse. And, um, you know, like the oceans can be, can be cleaned just like that. Um, the weather, you know, of course, I think the weather has been manipulated for hundreds of years, maybe even, but it's definitely been manipulated for the past 120 years. And that, you know, we can actually, manipulate the weather for our own benefit it's been done negatively but we can now do it for our own benefit and it means that we can we can move out of the of the cities we, you know we can um, go to places where we haven't been able to inhabit before we you know the med beds alone will give us an extra 25 years on our life but it's looking like our lifespan will double because we always had a longer lifespan anyway you know, the Bible, the ancient texts, they always talked about how we lived for hundreds and thousands of years. And then this changed. So, and I know um, Harvard looks at the, it shows that we can easily live 120 years. So I know in the Bible, it says that that we were capped at 120 years. This, you know, this, this may have been done for bad reasons or good reasons, who knows, but we were. So as our DNA is changing, these genetic changes will switch back on again and we'll be able to get a longer lifespan. But even if that isn't the case, the medbed technology will be able to do that. So there's a lot of off-planet technology waiting to come into the wings, but we have to work on raising the vibration of the collective now so that we can, you know, if you like, embrace this technology, because I think that there are still probably people on this planet who will abuse it. And so nothing is going to be given to us until I think, you know, we, we can stop abusing things. But it's not, it's not the everyday person who's abusing it. You know, it's the elites, as they call themselves. They're the ones abusing it. So these are the ones who they either have to work on their heart or they have to sort of, you know, just allow themselves to, to fall away, if you like. Um, you know, so the more of us that can become heart-led, the more of us that we, that we can work from the heart, raise that vibration, gain that pure intent, which is the pure intent of that, you know, everything that you're doing in your life is done for the greater good, you know, is done for the, for the, the, the collective, is done for, um, you know, not hurting people and helping people, and all of this, you know, and I think, I don't know. I mean, I, I think there's probably still quite a few people that haven't worked on themselves because I know that something like 85% of people don't do self-development or personal development, which is the same thing as spiritual development. It's all the same thing at the end of the day. So I think that, you know, 
more of us need to start working on ourselves because self-development, personal development, it's all a consciousness expansion. And consciousness expansion is also raising the, the vibration as well. It does, it does the same thing. Mm. So I think, you know, that's, that's what we have to really work on now as a collective and know that we do have all these things just around the corner. But there are these people on the planet who are, you know, making a mess and causing chaos. And um, I think also we need to stand up to them and say, no, you know, we need to stop playing their games. We really need to, whatever that may be, you know, stop voting, stop <laughs> being in the military, you know, and fighting their wars yeah. for them. Um, you know, stop going to work, you know, what, whatever it may be, you know, I think we need to break these yeah. systems that have been controlling us for such a long time. I mean, I'm not an anarchist, mm. you know, but I do think that we need to do something. Well, yeah, our, our systems are currently built from a foundation of anti-human ideologies. So none of this is to benefit us. None of these current education, medical systems, all, all of these major institutions that we are under their thumb, it never benefits humanity in any way. But I want to go back mm. to the white hat aspect for a minute myself and many others that i associate with are skeptical about the white hat possibility just because we've been promised a lot of things over the years that really never came through now i do see many wonderful things happening <clears throat> i see a, a great awakening in people's consciousness and in individual people's lives where they're doing wonderful things we're starting our own systems we're starting to build things from the ground up but as far as organized levels of our military or government that do have humanity's best interest in mind i'm a little skeptical about but i'd love to hear where you're sourcing this information and what makes you think that there are indeed white hats well, yes. Well, I mean, I'm 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 sourcing it from a variety of different places, but you know, I I think you sort of you have to feel into your own heart and feel what resonates with you. And um I agree with you, you know, that it doesn't look like the white hats are doing anything, but I sort of feel like there's been a lot of problems in our world for a very long time. And when you when you look at the level of where it's been, you know, with the child trafficking, um, you know, pedophilia, all this sort of thing. I mean, I, you know, I think these are sort of accepted areas of our world. I mean, it, you know, it's an uncomfortable truth that not many people want to really look at, but you know, they, I think that this has been a part of our world for a very long time. And I think maybe that takes a long time to undo all of that. Um, I know Stephen Greer says that this sort of awakening will probably take two, three hundred years because I think that's where sort of the, the, the golden age fits into that with the transition time. But then there are other people say it's going to be a lot quicker than that. I think if we had a black swan event of some sort, it would be quick. But I'm not too sure that we will have that because I'm not too sure that anything is going to be done for us. I think that we, you know, it's a bit like the universe. You meet the universe halfway, you know, and you, 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 you manifest or, you know, get whatever it is you want. And I think it's the same for us. I think that maybe more of us need to awaken, that more of us, you know, sort of need to be, you know, actively helping and working and participating and actually changing this world together. And... um I know that the you know we've got sort of energetic waves, high vibrational energetic waves coming in all the time, and I really do feel this. I feel that just now compared to last month feels higher vibrational to me. The energy does it feels better every single day, whether that's just me or whether that's you know people around me. But when I talk to other people, they always say yes, they feel there's a, a nice energy as well. It does feel like something bad has lifted off the planet to me. But, um, you know, in terms of uh, the White Hats and the Galactic Federation and these sorts of things, um, yeah, I mean, I do think that, you know, that, that we are getting some help. But in, in what context that help is and how much help we're getting, I don't know. 
because it's not sort of right in our face, you know, it's not something that we can say, you know, that's happening and that's happening. And um, I'm in um, an organization called Connecting Consciousness and it's that's run by an ex-UK politician and um, he has links to MI5, MI6 uh, through his family and he gets a lot of in intel from that. And so according to him, he's working with the White Hats. He's part of a White Dragon Society. Mm. The White Dragon Society was set up they were they were all asked so i think there was something like um 12 different groups were all asked to work together to create this white dragon society which was a benevolent society that was going to be working with off planet races in order to sort of be on the ground if you like the boots on the ground doing a lot of the the things here and um you know i sort of feel that things like this could actually be true they know that it could actually be the case. I think that we have, there's enough evidence in our ancient texts and, you know, Bible and religious texts to show that our planet has been inhabited by extraterrestrials since time began, you know. So if they've been on this planet and they, they've been visiting this planet for thousands and thousands of years, I think they possibly only stopped a few hundred years ago. And I think that's because their you know the if you like the sort of you know that the the parasitic elites took over and they haven't been able to get in get in to help if you like mm -hmm. so you know we had the star seeds that you know that incarnated to a physical body to help from within and i think that's probably what's happening is that you know the disclosure you know the the truth seeking you know the the raising of the vibration of the planet it's all coming from within so it's not that we're going that it's not that we're getting external help, you know, in that sense. It's that we're getting help from within. So that we're helping to raise our own vibration from within. Because I do think that we have to do this ourselves. This is our planet and we can be given a certain amount of help. But I think that if it's done for us, then we're not going to snap out of this. God thing that we have going on, you know, we're su such worshippers, you know, we're always worshipping someone. If it's not God, it's a celebrity or a sporting hero, you know, or a musician, you know, we're always worshipping someone. So we're always, always giving our power away to something outside of ourselves. So I think if we sort of get this help, you know, people just sort of coming down and helping us, again, like so many, you know, all the indigenous tribes in the past, they've all then made these people gods, and, um, you know, we also don't quite know how to take responsibility for ourselves because if you like, we've been herded in so many different directions that we, we, don't really, we don't really have that sort of empowered sovereign, you know, sort of thing going on. And, and I think these are possibly things that as a collective we need to learn. And if everything's done for us, we're not going to learn these things. So that's sort of my, you know, my gut feeling about this. But I do think that we're getting help. Mm. I do. Just, just thinking about wave genetics, you know, that we're in a, we live in a telepathic universe, and telepathically, all these sort of, you know, um, thoughts and voices and things, you know. I mean, how many people, you know, sort of speak to spirit guides and channel and stuff like this? All this information coming in. Yeah, I mention this quite often. I'll have a profound thought or idea. A new awareness, and I'll be excited to share it on my show with my audience, but I'll wake up the next morning, and it seems like everybody else already has this understanding. It's already come out somehow, and it's permeated through the consciousness, so I definitely believe that we are becoming more connected, and there is a this information field that is starting to flow a little easier. Now that being said, let's talk a little bit about our consciousness abilities that we that have been dormant for a long time that we have not been utilizing that now would be a good time to start getting into and practicing some of our consciousness abilities again and you talk about the science behind manifestation and how that relates to the holographic universe. Talk a little bit about your understanding <clears throat> of manifestation and how we can basically create our reality through our our awareness perception and imagination 
Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, we already are. That's the thing, you see. We already are. We are creator beings, just like every being in the universe, I think. And essentially, because we live in a holographic universe, we're, you know, we're all creating our reality all the time. It's just that the reality that we've been creating isn't the one that we want. And, um, you know, the, the parasitic elites know that we're all uh, manifesting our reality. So they've been hyphen in a sort of um, siphoning off and hijacking the energy and directing it to them and pulling it away from us. So I think one of the most important things is to understand, first of all, how much power we have. You know, we really are crea already creating our own reality, but we're, oh, sorry, we're creating realities. Um, what we're sort of doing is creating realities based on our limiting beliefs and our belief structures. And these belief structures, they originate from programming, conditioning, trauma, abuse, you know, ancestral trauma and abuse, which, you know, at the field of epigenetics shows us that trauma is passed down in our DNA. So that's another thing that people can be doing now is working on their ancestral healing, you know, releasing all the trauma, which has been passed down from generations, you know, 40, 100 generations back and just releasing, just letting it go. Because another thing is, is that we, you know, we live in a free will world. And again, it can't be done for us. We have to do it ourselves. So, you know, we can ask one of our guides, you know, can you heal this for me? And then, you know, listen to the answer. We can go to ancestral healings. And um, there's a, a very nice lady in the US called Sue Chimino. And she does these ancestral healings for free. Every, every week she's doing one. And she just has a huge amount of people coming and she's just, you know, clearing all this ancestral trauma, the ancestral sort of collective beliefs that we've, that we've inherited when we incarnated onto this planet. So there's a lot of things that people can do. So we understand now that sound creates everything. So the field of cymatics has proven to us that sound creates physical matter. So if you like, uh, you know, like the... Um, the the sound the frequency is creating sort of these like sacred geometric shapes and we already know that the universe you know the world is made up of geometric shapes you know we've got the the golden ratio here we've got the fractals everything is a fractal you know we've got um the um the different you know geometric shapes we've got the flower of life you know so uh, tesla um, Newton, Isaac Newton, you know, they, they all believe that the flower of life was the everything. It was everything. And in sort of my research that I've been doing, I'm beginning to feel that the flower, flower of life is the universe and the different sort of pockets that you see within it, you know, are the pockets of dimension. So we already know that, the, the, that space is not linear, it's curved. And, um, you know, if we sort of think about the flower of life and, and how it's, um, how it's fit, fitted together, we can sort of see that, you know, that this sort of makes more sense. We can also see that as our um, blood cells start to sort of double, 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 it begins to look like the flower of life. You know, so you can just see these things, these different geometric shapes everywhere. So then sound is creating that. Mm. And sound is frequency. So frequency is everything. It's you know is being created, if you like, you know, by consciousness or whatever. But um, essentially, if we see that the holographic universe is you know, what we see has been created by our own thoughts, words, feelings, emotions, then we can uncreate it, you know, and we can create a better reality for ourselves. And one of the other things that I would say in terms of abilities is to start connecting back to your multidimensional self, you know, so start to access your clairvoyance, start to switch on your clairaudience, you know, start to get that, that knowing, that sense of knowing, start to feel mm. and, you know, that sort of that sentient feeling because this is the multidimensional self. 
And when you start to just access your senses beyond the, the physical five, five senses, then you're starting to access the subtle energy that's around you. And the more you do that, the more you consciousness will upgrade your body. So every time, you know, we get one of those aha moments, every time we learn something new, every time we sort of we, we meditate or, you know, sort of practice our intuitive skills, if you like, we our brain changes our DNA changes, and then consciousness is able to work with our DNA in a, in a better way, and it literally upgrades us. We become a new person. We become, you know, um, a different vibration. And the more we do that, the more we're upgrading ourselves continually up, 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 which is also expanding our consciousness, raising our vibration. So, it, you know, it's just working on on these abilities that we all have but again you know we we just switched them all off when we were kids now when you say upgrading i've had plenty of researchers come on and talk about how it's possible that we are evolving from carbon-based life forms to crystalline does that mean anything to you yeah so it's moving into homo luminous we're moving into the light body mm. Um, which is, you know, most likely the next next stage for humans. I mean, we are light bodies anyway. Even Einstein said that we're beings of light. And you can see, you know, just looking at us under the X-ray, you know, you can see that, you know, we are we are light. So um, yeah, I understand where you know where they're where they're where they're going with that. But I would say that we already are light, and so maybe it's realizing that you know, that we are light. And, and um, if you think about energy and matter, you know, matter is heavier, energy is lighter. So as we become more energy, so, you know, we're releasing, if you like, the physical traumas, you know, which creates like a sort of trapped energy in our body. We're releasing all of this sort of um, physical flesh, if you like, you know, we're, we're just releasing sort of you know, all the, the low vibrational thinking, the low vibrational feeling, we're releasing all of that, we're, we're becoming more energy. And as we become more energy, we step into that light body, into the, the crystalline body. And again, that's ascension, it's all the same thing, ascension, golden age, consciousness expansion, 5D, it's all the same thing. And it's where we've been heading for a very long time. But I think that we were stopped somewhere along the line. But now we're back in again and we're, we're heading back into that, into that crystalline body. And we, you know, eventually we won't have to eat. Mm. Um, you know, we won't have to do any of that. And, and actually there in the, the empire of Tartaria, there were um, breatharians. And these were people who didn't eat. And these were indigenous tribes as well, the indigenous tribes. There are still many indigenous tribes around today that don't eat. And they're able to work with the, the energy, you know, prana, the, the energy of the ether, and, um, and with the sun as well, which is a, a huge life-giving force. And they're able to sustain their bodies in that way. So we can see there are already people doing it on this planet, you know, so we will be able to get to that point as well. And, um, and eventually, I think all civilizations, I think that they've all been through this, this process. And I think eventually you just end up as pure energy. And, you know, eventually you integrate back in into source. For the last few minutes we have, I mentioned earlier the possibility that we've been reset multiple times as a species, that there have been, might have been multiple cataclysms throughout our history that has wiped out civilizations to a point to where we have no collective memory of how advanced we once were. There's many that speculate we may be headed towards another one of those cataclysmic eras or resets. I'd like to get your thoughts on if that's possible. Yeah. Well, I mean, the Great Reset um, supposedly happens every 250 years. The last one was 1776. And that's when the, the Empire of Tataria, which took over, you know, 90% of the Northern Hemisphere, it was so huge, was wiped out and possibly wiped out using energy weapons, actually, because you look at the, um, 
you know, the, the you know, just the, the huge mud floods and things that occurred from that. So we are due to have another reset in 2030 or around 2026. So there are many people that say that, you know, that, yes, this is the Great Reset coming. You know, you look at the World Economic Forum, they actually, they call it the Great Reset, you know, and they call it the New World Order. And they they keep trying to create this New World Order with all these resets that they do. But this is just in the past sort of, um, you know, say, few thousand years. I think a thousand years has been added on to our calendar um, by the church, the Vatican, at least 800 years, if not a thousand. So we're, we're already a thousand years behind. But, um, you know, you look, you look at what, what has actually occurred with these great resets and you realize how much our history has been altered already, which really makes you understand that what we see in our history books cannot, cannot be trusted. And, um, you know, it just makes you look at the world in such a different way. So in terms of, you know, the, the white pad of civilization, which I think you're referring to, the, the different indigenous tribes talk about how, how we keep being wiped out because we keep falling, falling into matter, you know, falling into um, low vibrations, falling into, um, oh, what's the Service word? Service to self um, you know, Debauchery. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we kept, and that's that's why Atlantis went, um, because we kept, you know, sort of just being uh, wiped out because we kept falling. And I don't know, you know, we, yes, we could have been falling into debauchery, but I suspect it's these same parasites that keep doing it. And they're sort of pulling mankind down with them, if you like. And maybe, you know, the interdimensional beings that the demons that is talked about in literally every single culture around the world talks about these interdimensional demons and um so yeah you know maybe it's that that we just keep sort of falling into temptation by by these demons and we just keep you know sort of for more power we sell our soul for more power which you can see just in hollywood alone that that's already been done but you know, in terms of whether it's the Great Reset every 250 years or whether it's the civilization falling, which the Mayans, um, you know, the, the Hopi Indians, they say that we're on our fourth, fifth world, I think, maybe even as much as seventh world. But these worlds went for a much, much, much longer. I mean, the, you know, we're talking like um, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of years in between these periods where we fell. So if Dr. Stephen Greer is right, we've got we 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 are promised five hundred thousand years of peace. That is what we've been promised, and that is what is coming. Then it means that all these other things, you know, are not going to happen. So if is the great is the great reset going to happen twenty thirty? Well, this we don't know, you know. And I'm not going to sit around on my and rest on my laurels, if you like. I'm still, as you probably are and everyone else, I'm still looking around. I'm still, you know, making sure that we're on track, you know, feeling into my heart, understanding more about the energies and always questioning and asking myself, have I, do I see evidence of things shifting to the better yet? I haven't at the moment. So for the moment, you know, I'm still saying the same thing, you know, out there doing the same thing and helping people to raise their own vibration, their own internal vibration. But I do feel that it will be okay. I do feel that. But I do know that we have to put the work in. It's not going to be done for us. And we have to put the work in. We have to prove and show that we can put the work in and do it. 100%. Elizabeth, thank you so much. This was fantastic. I'd definitely love to have you back on in the future. Much more we can get into. Before you go, let the audience know how they can find out more about you, website, uh, all your links. Yeah. Okay. So my website is elizabethhancock.com and that's Elizabeth with an S, not a Z. And um, I'm on YouTube at Elizabeth Hancock as well. I have um, a podcast called The Great Awakening Podcast. And um, I'm also on social media at Elizabeth Hancock Author on Instagram and Facebook as well. Excellent. Elizabeth, thank you so much. Like I said, we'll definitely be doing this again. And until next time, everyone have a wonderful evening. We'll talk again tomorrow.
We'll see y'all then.